Hey everyone, welcome to my next lesson about parameters in Revit API. Make sure to watch all the previous parts. And before getting started, if you want to learn all topics regarding Revit API in depth and enroll in my paid Revit API course, you can reach out to me via email in the pinned comment. So make sure to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, like the video and leave some comments. So let's get going. Now what we want is that we want to add a new parameter to the project, but we know what limitation. We know that we need to add only a share parameter file. So that's the kind of the thing that we need to be aware of. So what we need to do there is that we need to get the access to the share parameter file. For the time being, we're not gonna uh, we're not gonna uh, create a new one. This is something that I will show you in the next videos. But here we're just gonna create a new one. I think I didn't save this, so I'm gonna create a new group arch. Just a quick way, a new parameter uh, part one, just to make it really simple and make it like text, for example text there we have it so that works and I'm gonna simply click OK so now if I go to share parameters here I have it so the group and the parameter so again let's go step by step without creating any extension methods just understand how does that work because usually it's the way you learn is the way you kind of start exploring and implementing something so start you start with just writing this in one place uh, again, it depends on your experience. When you get more experience, you can actually think of this in a faster way, in a faster manner. So we're going to go in a simple way. We're just going to write it in one place. And then I will show you all the extension methods that I've created so you can easily use it for for further like development. So what we've learned with you that our application has the property uh that is called open share parameter file which will open the, the the parameter file again you can use like file exist check whether some file exists but again you don't know the path so it really depends on like what information do you know are you sure that it has the share parameter file you can do a lot of validation checks uh, this is something that we will cover when it comes to the development of plugins because now our primary fo focus is on loading Revit API. But in the real app, you usually do a lot of validations and all of these things. So we go definition file, definition file, and we say application because it's application wide. And we go open share parameter file, which gives you the definition file. And that the definition file object represents a share parameter file on a disk. So now we have the definition file. What we've learned with you that if you make a comparison of what we do manually is that we can simply say, give me that group. So let get access to that group. Or let's even create a new one, right? Why not? Let's even get this one and then we'll kind of make some, make some adjustments to this. So first of all, let's get this group. So I'm going to go with the var group name that I want to get. And that will be Arch, I think. That's the way I call it. I call it it. And now I'm going to say arch group. And I'm going to say definition file. In definition file, what I know about the definition file, it's file name and the groups it contains. Again, the file name and all the groups that we have in there. We could have had like more of these. So I go groups and I can say get item. And here I specify the group name. So that's the way we can access this. I think we should be able to access this through indexer as well. Let's kind of check if that works. No, it doesn't. So we're going to go this through the get item. So group name. So now we what we did is that we, we told that I want to get all groups. And right now I want to get some items. But I don't want to do this like this. I'm going to say definition groups. And I'm going to tell you why. So definition file groups. So I'm getting all groups. Okay, there is some like definition file. Without definition file, I just say definition groups. And now I'm going to replace it with the definition groups. And I'm going to get item. Oops. Because eventually I want to also add something to it. Uh, so here we're simply saying I want to get the definition groups. I can get the group or I can create a new one. So for example, if I go uh, structure group, 
uh, structure group and I can say str for example and I'm going to say uh, here definition groups definition groups create and I'm going to put the name for this let's even do this right now so without having we don't need to have any transactions in there so I'm going to run this. I'm clicking AF because I have a shortcut for the command of add-in manager that is called add-in manager manual mode face faceless. So it allows us to uh, run the previous command. So now if I go to manage and open share parameter files, you'll see that we have one more group, right? It's kind of cool, right? So it's pretty easy, right? Just, just wanted to show you how to create this and how to make that happen. So let's go back in here. So here we have the arch group. Let's kind of stuck with this one. Now, I don't think I want to create it. Actually, if you try to create one, uh, let's going to do this. You'll get an exception because you already have it. And it's really great that we have this exception. And the main reason why is because whenever you we usually should have we should have descriptive names for our methods so if it tells it should create then as a result it should actually create so if it's not if it's not able to create we should have an exception for it that's the way you should really go about creating your own methods so if you say for example create project parameter if that action cannot be done you should throw an exception never just return like null no don't do don't do this simply uh, throw an exception because you're not being descriptive then you should maybe have a different name uh, for the method again we're gonna talk about this more in depth but just to keep that in mind that name should be descriptive and in that case it goes okay because it, it's it doesn't have a name create or skip for example something or create or get it doesn't have something like this so for the time being I'm gonna comment this out so I can get the group and I can get all the def again I'm gonna say what parameter do I have there uh, share parameter part one okay I'm gonna say like var definition name and that should be par one uh, part one and here uh, what we can do is that we can go arch group and we can say par <laughs> It's a horrible name, actually. Uh, let's just name this definition and okay, because you know we we're not being descriptive in Revit. So we get our we go arch group definitions. So we know the access to the group. We say give me all definitions that are in there, and if I want to be specific, I simply use get item, and I specify the definition name for this, and there we have it. So now we should have just one definition. So now we retrieved the definition that we need. Again, uh, what we're going to do in there, so right now we have the definition that we want to use. So let's even go like task dialog, show message, definition, uh, just go with the definition and, and let's reach the name from this one. We'll see that or not. So AF par one, there we have it. Everything works the way we wanted it to. Uh, so what I want right now is that we know that we have something like document who is responsible for having the access to project parameters parameter bindings how we can add this is by using a method called insert so we need to say what definition to use there and we also need to specify the binding for this so and that is logical right so here what we have in the shared parameters is just a description of a parameter so we know that it should have the name part one we know what the data type it should have but we don't know all the like information like what parameter group it should be under what categories it should belong to is it sh should it be like instance or type parameter so this is something that we need to pass uh pass so 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 Revit knows how to use this so what we learned about our binding so the way we define whether it's instance or type binding is that we simply use type binding or instance binding so if you go like this you can create type binding or instance binding so based on this it will know what uh, what binding to use what 
whether it should be an instance parameter or type parameter. And actually here, we're actually leveraging the power of polymorphism. So you can check that video again about polymorphism and understand how we're leveraging that power. Because here, as a parameter, we need to pass a binding. And it's actually an abstract class. And we can pass here the type of this or any derived type. So the types that actually inherit from it. So just check out the video about polymorphism one more time. So what we're going to do here is that first of all, but to create a binding, we need to know the categories for it. So I'm going to create a category set. So var category, category set. So I'm going to use var new, like new category set. Also, you can create application, create, and that, that class is responsible for creating like a lot of instances, basically. So you can say category set, and that'll create it. So we can make this that way. And now from the category set, we can simply say insert. As you can see, it works in a similar manner. And here we need to pass a category. Again, our category is not a built-in category. So what you would need to do there is that you need to go to that class and analyze how on earth you can get the category uh, by having like a built-in category. So first of all, it doesn't have any constructors, but you can actually uh, call methods like get category where you can get built-in parameters. So to get the category from the built-in category, you simply pass document and built-in category. But uh, in Revit 2022, I think, if I go with the category, I think that we have uh, like methods uh, get built-in category. But here we need to pass for each type ID. Actually, it's not that complicated to figure that out. Uh, I'm going to show you some things that have been changed so we can do some make some comparison because it's really important because I know that uh, we still build a lot of plugins for 2020. So we're going to actually go back and forth and in my like plugin examples, you'll see like different versions and we'll go through everything. Uh, so yeah, so we can go to the category side there. Uh, let's go back. So insert and we need to pass a category. So let's pass it like category, get category, document, and I'm going to say built-in category of walls, for example, like OST built-in category of OST wall, walls. There we have it. So now we need to pass that, uh, we need to create a binding. Let's suppose that that should be instance binding var binding, for example, binding, and we say app let's go again with this new instance binding and we need to pass the category set there we have it so now we can pass it here and we should create it but the main question that we should ask ourselves is are we making any change to the Revit document and actually it, it is so we need to pass it into a transaction so i'm gonna go to the very left part i'm gonna hold my shift so I can select multiple lines and then I'm going to kind of uh, cut them. And what I'm going to do is that I'm say document run because we have that extension method. Again, please check out uh, the way how we created it. So you know about, but again, if you forgot about this, it simply uses the power of like, again, extension methods. And we simply have a transaction here. So I don't want to repeat these times a lot so i created that extension method we're going to put a transaction name for this add new parameters and here we're going to pass this so let's see if that works let's see if that works we're going to go to revit we're going to run it i've i've already run this so let's check if that works yeah there we have it we have this part one and you may ask like wait a minute you didn't pass the parameter group right yeah, we, but you can actually here you can have the parameter group because by default it has uh, the group of invalid but you can actually pass here any kind of like built-in parameter group for example like pg identity data it's up to you so we've already added this one so i'm just going to do this that way so that's the way how you can work with these files right again that's really important for you to understand how to interact with chair parameter files, uh, all of this stuff, how to add new parameters. So for example, here, if you go arch group and you go definitions, you can also create 
so we should actually go to the group and go again wait a minute so here we have the definition group right and we get the access from these ones so we should go our group definitions create and here we can pass a new external definition options where you specify the name of the parameter and the parameter type that's in the case so for example bob i don't care and for example it should be angle so as simple as that so and that will generate of course i'm not going to run this but that's the way we create our parameter so we pass the name and we pass the type of that parameter so now we know with you how to interact with share parameter file and how to simply add these parameters to our project parameters right over here and if you check it right if you go to the wall for example and you go to parameters and you find this part one you can see that right now it's an internal definition right it's an internal definition and uh that's really important that when you add an external definition to a Revit project, it becomes internal definition. All the parameters, all the, again, let's think about the terminology. We have definitions, right? There are the things that describe our parameters. If they are in the project here, they are internal definition. It doesn't matter the way you, you add them via, uh, via share parameter file or you went and created the type project parameter. But how we can differentiate them is that, for example, these ones have the GWIR. So that is the unique number that they're going to have. We're going to look at this a bit later on uh, when we will kind of retrieve our uh, internal definition by just having the external definition. So, for example, if you go with mark, for example, if you get GWIR from the mark, exception has been thrown by the target. So that will throw an exception. But here, the, this one, actually, it has a GWIR. So the way you determine whether it's a shared parameter or not, uh, you can actually use the property call it is shared, but you can also access this uh, GWIR property of it. So that is also a very important concept. So keep that in mind. So external definitions are only the, they're only external definitions as long as they're in that file, external, like shared parameter file. As soon as you add them to the project, they become internal definitions. So keep that in mind. That's it for this lesson. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and have a beautiful day.